Okay, well, it's 5.34 and the Board of Commissioners and Department of Electric Department is meeting on May 6th. Uh, this is a special meeting uh, to discuss management planning and where we're at and if there are any issues that uh, the board needs to be discussing because it just seemed prudent not to wait another two weeks to meet given the circumstances. So um, I would very much like to hear from Brian and Jim if there are issues that they want to bring to our attention. Um, I've got that. You wanted to do that hardwick on a call coverage thing. You wanted to do that. So here's a copy of that. And we've done the schedule a couple times. <clears throat> Lynn, can I ask who's in attendance that I can't see? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All, all, all of the commissioners are in attendance. Um, and well, Roger and, and Reno and I are here, and uh, Michael and Brasino and Miles are on Zoom, and then Brian and Jim are also here. Thank you. And, and you're here. Yes. Uh, on Zoom. So, uh, so what Jim just gave me is an agreement uh, amongst uh, HED, Marsville Water and Light, uh, Orleans Electric, and Spell Electric for on-call coverage. Uh, and Brian, you're okay with this? Yeah. Uh, and the rates are fair and everything else? Yeah. Uh, then I will. So I move to approve the agreement. I said I, I would say one thing okay. one thing that we've done to get Brian so he's not on call here is we've we're going to uh put the apprentices on call with the guy that comes from uh Orleans and Stowe. And then we've given them pagers. So everybody has a pager. So Brian will be out of that. And that, that way he can have a life again. Because it started off a little while ago and started out with my mind on the phone. So you will be taking one of those or none of those? There won't be any need to go through Brian because uh, the the um, apprentice will call CRC. Yes. Let them know that we've got and whatever else. And then they won't have to track down another person because both us, both whoever from Fort Leeds and whoever comes from Stowe also has a page of along with our apprentices. So they're all getting notified that. So there's really nothing with Brian. We know who's on the we know who's on the system. And okay. Yeah. So, only one who want to come up with two people on the worst problem. Yep. So that was going to be my question was what about when it's Mars? Yeah. Then you'll be on the call. Then I'll be watching that through CRC. They'll call me. I'll call Mars. Um, I mean, from my vantage point, the main thing is that it works and and that you're good with it because you know yep. what we need. Yep. So if you and Jim think that this is Good, then I think it's because we need to we need to let the others know. I guess everybody else has said they're fine with it and we haven't yet officially. Right. From the email chain. So so this, we, we met with or I talked to our leads this morning. They had some problems with the way we scheduled that, but we had those rectified. They're set. More still set, as far as I know, still set. Right. So. Okay. Well, there's a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think the ayes have it. So um, this is approved. Um, do we need to, do I need to send, or does the board need to send something, or you can send something and say that the board has approved this? Okay. Or we don't need to do that We're at this point as well. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, no, listen, I mean, it, you know, it, that's. Yeah, no, this works out good and it works out. It's a lot fairer than Ryan. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's terribly important. Okay. 
Any other things? And Beth, Beth, I'm assuming we've gotten no response to the lineman ads? Correct. None. And, and, none. And well, we have gotten responses, but none of them are even, they're not even apprentice linemen, much less first class. And and that's where are we getting the weird ads from? I mean, the the responses. Um, the you weird. Know? Well, at the risk of being politically correct, the most unqualified ones were had been being from the Burlington Press. Um, the ones from Indeed are local, but so far there's none. There's nobody with any kind of lineman experience whatsoever that have applied. And then seven days in Vermont, I haven't got any online, but it's going to print this week. I see, um, okay. But is it, is it online on their yes. website? Yes. Okay. And what about, and nothing from NEPA? Correct. Okay. Can you find out um, if, um, what is it, NRECA, the national, that's the co-ops, but there's a different, there's a, there's a national peace organization or if they have a job board. If there's a, be... the APPA, American Public Power, and then there's NRECA for co-ops, which we are yeah. a member of NRECA. That's what I thought. So we should be posting on both their job boards. Okay. Um, I'll get that taken care of. And I, I don't know, is there any, is there any regional entity? Um, well, I guess that's, that's NAPA. Yes. For public power, but what about for, I mean, because I don't know if Edison Institute um, has anything, but if there's just a, you know, a general, or if the IBEW has anything. I'll see if I can just do a Google search and see what's available to post uh, yeah. linemen pos positions, linemen openings. <laughs> We may just need to be looking outside our neighborhood, yes. as it were. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so that's on that. Um, in terms of the bank loan, what? With with you, what's what's the status? Is I'm there sorry. a set? With, which I'm bank? Is, which bank are you referring to? Union Bank. We had postponed, um, you know, signing that had happened right. It, it was we were supposed to close right when Mike resigned. Right. So right. So I will have those documents for the board meeting Monday night for the line of credit. Great. Great. Okay. So that's and and are we okay on, on cash position right now? Absolutely, because we got that Vermont bond bank money in. Okay, good. Um and also our rate increase, the revenues are starting to come in, which is not which you know, almost three percent. Okay. Um I spoke with Abby Friedman from VLCT this afternoon. Um, I'm not sure how much help they're going to be. I mean, she was very pleasant, but um, they do have a job description toolkit and a hiring toolkit that you have to get onto their website. And um, I tried to do that and um, it said that my email wasn't recognized. So um, there's somebody there that I have to talk to and they had already left for the day. So hopefully I'll be speaking with them tomorrow. Um, and she's also going to check with a consultant, um, recruiting consultant that she's worked with before. There are two others who she's worked with who she said aren't available. Um, and, uh, but there's one who might be, and so she was gonna check with him and she sent me uh, the name of a, of a firm also that might be able to help with um, the job search for a general manager. But I think one of the things that we need to talk about um, is at the end of the day, we're gonna need to come up with a job description. Um, well, we, we, we need do to have, we do we have, just only need to revise it if we don't. Well, I think, I think the question that I have mm -hmm. um, is, 
what are we looking for in a, in a general sense? Do we want somebody who's going to do everything, including the engineering work? Or do we want someone who is going to be more of a general, general manager, if you will, um, and, and have an engineering person on staff or under contract with, a, with, a, with an engineering firm, but who would be doing the nuts and bolts of some of the stuff that, mm -hmm. that Mike did um, and have a person who could focus more on some of the customer relations things and some of the issues that we've that we've had um, and and looking forward as we're going to see more legislation related to an increasingly electric world if you will um, and we're going to need to take another look at AMI and uh, there's just going to be a lot of policy things that are coming down down the pike um, and, and who could be more focused on that and working with with customers in the community. The current, the current position description does place an emphasis on utility experience. Um, it covers the whole range. It's sort of the dream candidate, you know, the perfect candidate knows everything and do everything. Right. That's kind of how it's written right now. And to the extent it says you have to have this many years working in public in public and private utility, that might exclude something like you described. Well, it might, it might, or you know, maybe maybe we, you know, that's our wish list, but but we're looking for that or the equivalent. You know, maybe somebody has the skill set that's been used in a different sector, yep. um, and has maybe enough. I mean, maybe it's somebody who does have an engineering background but they've been really more on the management side so they can understand the issues, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be that, they're not going to get hands on a, a meter install, you know, dealing with the CT meter or something like that. So it, it's, um, so that's something that I think, you know, we're going to need to make a, a decision on <clears throat> before we start the process. Uh, because I, I think it affects it affects the job description. It affects what we're what we're looking for. Um, the um, engineering aspect should be on the on the contract figure. Should or should not. There's no reason that a manager should also have an engineering degree. There are some aspects, uh, and it's a wide range. Um, to go ahead and um, contract that out would be a, a, a better uh, front, um, in my opinion. You think it would be better to contract it out? Yes. Yeah. There are so many aspects of the, of the uh, engineering, uh, you know, whether it be substation or the uh, transmission lines or the general distribution lines that go through a community and uh, how to carry a load from point A to point oh, yeah, B. Yeah. And uh, those are all things that um, are a wide range. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm aware of that. And I, but I think Mike was doing a lot. He contracted some well, of it out, but he, but he did a lot of it himself. He did. And yes, we did run into a few situations that uh, um, he referred back to um, some colleagues that uh, were uh, people that we knew and, uh, you know, for construction purposes. And so that's a wide range. And uh, going to an engineer outside uh, is probably a better feature than expecting a manager to have that. Right. Yeah, for quality. me, the question well, is, do, do you contract out for that or do you hire an engineer? I mean, some some of like so has I think has an engineer on the staff. They don't. I don't know. Not that I. Not that I do either. Yeah. I think which which whichever way you go, contracted or in house, it should be removed from the general manager's responsibility. And if you remove it, I think you get a lot better responses to the general manager position because people look at that and say, ah, I don't want to do everything. 
So I would just remove it from the general manager's description and how we do it, whether it's outside or we finally hire a guy, doesn't really matter in terms of finding a general manager. You know, I've, I've said all along that there were too many hats in Mike's closet. And uh, that's the easiest one to remove because we could find engineering. There's other things we can't find. So I would take it out of the description for the general manager's uh, uh, ads and let's find a guy who could manage the business and he can find out what he needs. I mean, we've got someone who can do the accounting fabulously. Thank you very much, Beth. Now we need somebody to do engineering at some point. But Thank let's you. just get a general manager. Well, let's let's see how much progress we can make tonight because I've got the job description open. If I was dialed in, I could share it. Maybe I should. Um, and I'm trying to see where there's anything in it that would make it point be pointing us in the wrong direction. And I think the education and experience, that's what I'm finding right now. And here's what it says. It says, an undergraduate degree in business management or engineering, and Mike didn't have either of those. So obviously the search committee last time. He had an associate degree. It. Yeah. So a degree in business management or engineering. Um, and I don't know, frankly, that's pretty specific. You know, somebody could have a degree in something that's relevant and helpful that's called something different than that. So that might be overly detailed. That's a good starting place. What education is required? And then it says, and experience in electric utility management. Um, and then it says substantial experience in utility industry may substitute for lack of the appropriate degree. Yeah, that, that's probably something that we, I think for me, it goes the other yeah. way, that that there may be other experience besides being in an electric utility. Yeah. Yeah. Experience um, needs to include work in electric utility system operations, maintenance, construction. Yeah, I don't, although someone who has, no, who has no clue about electric utilities is going to be lost. That's my I guess. have some thoughts in my yeah. week, in my week and a half of being here. Yeah, okay, well, we want to hear them. Okay, I my personal thought is you should get a general manager to manage the business, just like you're talking about, and bring somebody on, preferably management, if you will, work unlimited hours with no pay, and Brian's. And have it be Brian, it'd be an operations manager basically doing what Brian's doing, but do more than what Brian's doing. And have Brian, I know he's 71 or two, <laughs> he is a that, kid, but not that many years left, he certainly won't. Have him learn under Brian what the whole system is and let that, let that person set your standards, policy, blah, 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 easements, all this kind of stuff that is operational rather than that the general manager. You, you report to the general manager. You'd be the, that side of being the operation manager, do the budgets, do the this, present the budgets to you. That's just my one and a half weeks. And with the business, I, I think we all like what you're describing. Would that person, would the general manager be the person who looks after Ratepayer relations, community relations. Yeah. I think it's, he's got to be. I don't, just so so much much stuff I don't mean exclusive. What I got, there's so much stuff coming down the pipe from the legislature and whatever yeah. that somebody's going to be on top of. I don't know what your top seven probably plays that role. But. So would would the, would the general manager be doing the customer relations? So, yeah, good. Okay, good. I like that idea, and especially someone who's proactively excited about changing legislation and grant opportunities and collaborating with BEPSA, and I, I, I think that bifurcation makes sense. Well, if we're talking about BEPSA, though, again, if somebody doesn't have any utility background, they're, they're, they're going to BEPSA meetings is not terribly useful. They get into some pretty technical stuff. But they also have all the 
goings on. You know? Yeah, I think I, and and the the job descriptions from um, where was it, Swanton or whichever one was um overseeing all of the departments you know they they still had representation to vepsa in there and i and i think the expectation was not that they were leading the technical charge on all the things but they were maintaining good relations and and the face of the organization and that seems important i'll give you for instance yeah scott johnston and in um <clears throat> Still, didn't he? he's not an old, he is an engineer, civil engineer, but I don't think he had a lot of uh, work in utility management. Okay, but he but he but he had an engineering background. But he, we don't use it for like what Mike was doing, and right? He, but but yeah, I remember when I started at an electric utility, okay, and and I had to have somebody explain to me what the difference was between a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour. You know, I was starting at ground zero. You learn a lot on the job. You don't have to, I, you know, I'm not an engineer. I look, you know, but you, if you're awake <laughs> when you're doing your job, you learn about the business. Right, absolutely. And, and, and so if, some, if somebody, there are different ways of, I guess for me, there are different ways of getting there. One is having had utility experience. I, I, as I told you, I, my, had I not left to go to law school, I would have effectively been running one of the divisions of, of, of the utility company. Yeah. So all the customer service, all the customer relations, and having oversight over the line crews, obviously not going out and doing their, their work. But that was happening after seven years of working in a variety of jobs in the business and learning the business without an engineer. If somebody has an engineering background, then um, I think, you know, if they happen, they come in at a different, their learning curve is different if they haven't been in, in, in a utility company. But if somebody doesn't have an engineering background or some kind of a technical and hasn't worked in the industry, it makes me wonder how they well I, I would question Pepsa and ask them how many of their general managers have my engineering background. I think it's zero. <laughs> I'm just giving you my yeah we no. have some options. No, so. it's it's yep. it's it is helpful. So that at least that one paragraph in the current position description, I'm with you that we we need to revise it. The one that says what your job requirements are. All the other stuff that talks about job is it's um stylistically it's it, it reads like it was written by a committee. You know, it, it, it says the same thing three different ways. No, we should. But it's not wrong. No, but we should tighten it up. It, it, it's yeah. not, I think I think if it goes on too long. Okay, we just have to make sure we get it done. I can't do it so. I, I pulled it all together. Well, again, one of the questions that I have is, should we be hiring a recruiter? Because I don't know how we manage this pro the process. If we, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we would actually get applicants. Um, I was involved when the town was hiring the town manager. Was there a recruiter for that? Um, there wasn't, there was a very large committee that was all of the select board. Mm -hmm. And I want to say at least four or five public people. Um, and the select board made the decision and the select board did the actual interviews or did we all do it? I can't even remember that a while ago. But it was... And we had multiple meetings and had a whole ranking process. You know, it was it was it was a big process. And um, I mean, I can talk to Eric about it. But um, and they got a lot of backup from the LCT. I mean, I remember sitting in on you know a Zoom meeting with somebody from the LCT who was explaining various policies and different things that we needed to worry about. Um, and 
you know, I don't know what stuff we're going to find um, in these two toolkits, the job description toolkit and the hiring toolkit. But um, I don't know if we have a conflict on use of the room. Um, people have been coming in. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. I don't know what we're going to find there, but it's not like we have an HR staff to be running the process. To be running the process, and I don't think any of us. I don't see any hands going up. I mean, it's hard enough to find the time that everybody can make. Um, um so so I put that out there. Um, you know, I will be hearing Abby Friedman as the person at the LCT that I spoke with. Um, she's gonna get back to me on this consultant. She wanted to speak to them to see if they were interested before mm -hmm. we contacted them. And then there's this municipal resources inc., which is a consulting firm that may be able to help us. And so I, I just, because otherwise we're going to put together a job description and then we're going to have to figure out where we're going to post it. And then we're going to have to Spring. go through everything that comes in. We can't have, you know, it, it, we're, there's not going to be somebody clearing through the things of people who are clearly, you know, not right. Um, or at least putting things in a in a pile of ones that look like they're not right, which I mean we had different piles of things. We had, you know, people who were clearly qualified. This is when we were doing the town manager search, and people who were, you know, absolutely not qualified, and then there were the question marks. Um and we need to, you know, talk about the process, you know. So concerned about. This is going to take longer without a a, a recruiter, um, and and I think we want to get somebody in sooner rather than later. All things being equal, so the right person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't think we should hire someone because they're the first ones to come in the door, and and but but I think I think we. We need to get going on this, and and I think we could spend a lot of time amongst ourselves talking about it without actually moving the process forward very much. Lynn, this this may be ignorant, but is this something we can engage Beps on? Is this like a direct service that we could contract with them for? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I can I can ask. Um, I can I I can certainly. Ask Ken. Um, I don't know whether they do or not. But I'm writing myself a note. Yeah. I'm sorry. Was somebody going to say something? Um, so um, just to advance our thinking a little bit, I, I read the paragraph from the current Hardwick Electric position description. Here's the here's how they wrote it more recently. I think it was very recently for Lindenville Electric. Lindenville Electric, and it says a bachelor's degree is preferable with seven years. I don't know how they got to seven, but seven years of progressive responsibility in leadership roles or equivalent education and experience in a public utility or comparable environment. So where they say comparable or and preferred, they're kind of taking the funnel and the net and making it wider and wider. Whereas the way we wrote it, it got narrow, 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 maybe even in ways we didn't want to narrow. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm with you. you can almost like mix and match the way. I put the same thing in the chat, Roger. I think it's the right tone. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think we. I don't think we want to be absolute about much of anything. Now they do have a next sentence that I think is a little bit from what you were saying. You know that we have VEPSA working for us, 
buying a whole set of power. So you, you're not going to screw anything up if you don't have experience buying wholesale power. And if you got a reasonable aptitude and you, you can learn it, but it's not like our GM is really making the decisions. Um, so here for Hart for Lindenville, they said recent industry experience includes working knowledge of wholesale power, the renewable energy sector, detailed understanding of how the electric industry operates within Vermont, FERC, and ISO New England's utility regs. Now that takes your candidate pool and goes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you can you can you can learn ISO New England's regs. It's see to me, I would say that that you need to understand how a power pool works, a gen, you know, a, a general understanding of, of how power pools work. Mm -hmm. But if you've been in PJM instead of ISO New England, um, you'll you'll you're, you'll learn it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, if if you've been in a a utility regulatory environment in Pennsylvania, but not in Vermont. You'll 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 learn the Vermont regs, and we and we have Eli. We have a lawyer who's also and Beb says. So what do you so what are you thinking? Would you would you not include a sentence like that? I, I think I think I would include it, but again, somewhat more generally. More of like preferred or desired. Yeah. yeah. Or or. You know, I don't. I don't have. I haven't been able to open the. I brought this, but I can't open the document. Um, if it were, if it were more general, if it wasn't just ISO New England or um, Vermont regulation, FERC is FERC. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. that's every place. Um, so maybe it would be preferred experience. You know. A desirable experience includes you, you could put in words like that. Yeah. yeah. But I would I would still I I it's narrowing it, but it's not narrowing it as much as the mm -hmm. Lindenville language. Yep, yep, yep. If it's if it's not restricted to Miles, you went you said you were keeping up with this. Did you look at the other ones that had been sent to us by Ken? Was there okay. anything better? I, I grabbed Lynn and I don't know why I thought Lynn. Oh, there, there was a lot of recycled language between the two of them. It, it seemed either it came from the same source or they looked at each other's. Yeah. Miles, do you want to take a crack at at, re, at revising? Sure. I I think I guess I'm um I'm wondering if we want to think specifically about the order of operations, like if we're using a recruiter, a consultant, VEPSA, we're doing it with our own firepower. Because um, I'm just, I, I would think that any of the ones except us would have some of their own processes for doing this. I'm not talking about process. I'm talking, I mean, just, the job description. I think we have to start with that. You know, okay. or we have to take a first crack at the job description to go to a recruiter with. They're not going to tell us what we yeah. need. And we've seen enough of them now from the other, you know, I think we've got ours and then we've got what, three others. Yep. So great. You know, that's, I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I will, I feel like Lynn does in one way, which is I want to be proud of what we put out and feel it's a good job because it reflects on all of us. On the other hand, I feel like it just needs to be good enough to get us going. And to the extent it's bogging us down, I wouldn't yep. aim for perfection. Yeah. That's my... Uh, I was going to say, it's the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the only, thing, the only thing I thought was a non-starter in the, in the one we currently have for Hardwick Electric was that requirements. So if you if you could monkey with the requirements, then we got something that's, that's at least usable It'd be great to look at the other places where it's, you know, repetitive, redundant. Yep. But that's not, it doesn't seem to me that that's an absolute. You know, because if you're doing that, then I, you know, I can follow up um, with this municipal resources organization. And if she comes back with a consultant, with a recruiter, with a recruiter, 
And and if she doesn't, you know, do a little research and see if there are and talk to Ken. Yeah. Um and and see if there, you know, if they don't have anything, if there are other recruiters who could who could do this so that by the time we have our regular meeting, one of one of the issues is that we can't talk together except in a warned meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 very difficult to keep yeah, things so moving. Forward on, on a timely basis. Um, so even like the email that Beth sent out today, I know I'm digressing a little bit about the dental. We can't have a discussion about it on 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 in, in email. Um, so um, so Lynn, relatedly, am I correct in assuming that we cannot work in a collaborative document together like I couldn't put together a draft job description shared as a Google Doc and other people could comment on it asynchronously is that not allowed I don't think that would be allowed okay you know I, I, it could be done bilaterally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um which is kind of crazy but but <laughs> I, I think um but yeah I don't I it's a good question you would you it's a it's a it's a weird situation because it's 2024. <laughs> well, it's not it's not that there's a reason for it for public you know, for a public meeting to all. Sure. But but we we're getting into the nitty gritty more than ordinarily we would need to because of the situation. Yep. And and so it's particularly hamstringing because <laughs> it's not a way to get things done. Um, yep. So, um, well, to move it forward, I, I can put together okay. a draft. Is it, it, should I share it with Roger or you, Lynn? Who, who wants to be the bilateral partner on this? Well, and it can be shared bilaterally with more than one person. <laughs> you just send out three emails, send to everybody one at a time. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, and then folks could give you their, 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 their comments. But I mean, our next meeting is on is in two weeks. Um, I don't know if we can, you know, do anything before then that we can move anything forward any faster. And I don't know what I'm going to hear back from Ken or from VLTC. Um, so. I think, and we are going to need to decide on process, but if we're going to have, if, you know, it makes a difference if we're going to have a recruiter on what that, that process is. Um, so I don't know if people want to discuss that now, if people have thoughts on that. I, you know, I could go either way and, you know, make a decision to not do a recruiter initially doesn't preclude hiring one, you know, a month later or three weeks later. You know, you can always hire a recruiter. That's true. That's so, true. you know, one of the things we try out is let you make those calls, those connections, and see what other groups can do around us. Yeah, yeah. And, the and, then, has and we done. get our position description done. We start getting it out there to the obvious places. And if we're not getting candidates or we're having trouble screening well, but we, then we can say we just can't do it ourselves. Well, we also need a, a, a process because we are a public body, a process for screening them um, and how we're going to do that. Um, and, you know, I mean, we, don't, we don't have to make decisions about what we're going to do at the interview stage because we don't have any applicants at this point, but that'll follow on. Um, I mean, when, again, when we were hiring the town manager, there was a set of questions that, there were some suggestions from the LTC, but I mean, but this group, this larger group put together questions and everybody was asked the same questions. Super um, and, and, and I And I asked, um, that doesn't preclude if there's something in particular in somebody's resume that you know asking them about that, but but it needs to be a pretty transparent process. 
Um, we're also going to need to talk about salary um, and and what we would be offering. Uh, I mean, we can run, you know, list a job as salary commensurate with experience and not put anything in, which probably might be the best thing to be doing at this point. Um, but uh, but we are sooner rather you know going to need to have some idea of what we're what we're offering, and I'm 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 guessing that it's going to be less than what we were paying Mike, given that we're that was the feedback from Ken Miller. Yeah, that the, his counterparts were paid not paid nearly as much as it. Yeah. Well, and and if we're if we're changing the job description as well, I think that makes sense with that. Um, yeah. Ken threw out those numbers of what we'd need to, the range we'd be thinking about for serious candidates previous meeting. Perhaps we could use that as a starting point. Let's... Um, so can't we just use uh, to get things rolling? It, it, can the process simply be that we, as we post, we we get in applicants and we want to avoid having an unmanageable pile. And then as soon as that we start to have enough in the pile to make a special meeting worthwhile, we have a special meeting and the special meeting screens them. Yeah, my we, as a, so we as a group we screen them and then yeah. And then, then if we if we if there's any remaining after we screen them out, then we go to the next step of scheduling interviews. Well, I think the meeting. adaptation that I would suggest to them mm -hmm. is that as they come in, they get sent to everybody. That's nice. So that people can look at them. But not discuss. But not discuss them. Mm -hmm. And and then when we have enough of a pile, we do a special meeting. You know, if, if we get in a couple of resumes that look good, why 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 do we want to wait until we get a certain number in? I mean, one of the things I would think in the ad is is that we would say, you know, the job is open until it's filled. I was a way of saying that, but mm -hmm. you know, that in other words, there's no deadline on this thing. Mm -hmm. um, that it's 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 a rolling process. Um, and you know, if we get because also, I mean, if we if we get a good resume, you want to get back to that person. You don't want to leave them dangling for two weeks while we're waiting to see if we get in any other resumes. True. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm willing to do it as long as we're as long as when we meet, there's somebody saying, I think there's a really good resume. I don't want to meet. To just go through a bunch of garbage stuff, right? And, like and Beth and you know, it's been seen for long. You know, you guys screen through a lot of. And that's why I was suggesting that people see, you know, that we yeah. see them before the meeting. Yeah, that's a good idea. And we can have our, you know, our our yes, no, our individual yes, no, and maybe files. Yep. And and what I what I will do is I will get back in touch with. I'll talk to Eric about more about it because he I'm sure remembers what the town did better than I do. Um, in terms of process, um, but their time and situation is different. So, um, yeah, it's okay. Um, does anyone have anything else at this point? I would like to bring up some things so that the commissioners aren't blindsided. Blind um, we are sitting on $1.4 million of apps for fiber that have come in. We've got 21 of them, 15 are already overdue. They're not, we we're already didn't meet the requirement. Um, most of it is trimming. Brian's trying to get another trimmer. Some, I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of push in the state to get this done. So I just don't want. I just want you to be aware that we've got 
$1.4 million of apps. And apps are pay, our applications? Pay. Yeah, okay. That's more that are, are need to be estimated and paid, but you're going to end up with about 40, probably, apps. And some of these payments came in in March of March, May, June of 2023. You have 60 days to do it, or you can there's other remedies in the whole attachment thing. So I just just want you to be aware that we're not looking good. good how at how that. how do we how do we how do we remedy this? We need to get trimmers. That's what the main thing is. Trimmers. Are we are we advertising for trimmers? We've been trying. We've <clears throat> been trying. And I've got one that's supposed to return a call to me this week. Okay, but you're making calls, but we don't actually have. We have one trimmer that's on that's doing the work right now. This is A and B. A and B, right? Right. But you know, we've got that's the main that's the main holdup in all of these is trimming. There's holes, some holes need to be cut over, some holes need to be set, but basically that's the main. So have we put in RFP out for trimmers? Is it we're trying to get Right. I talked to Ashland. Right. Um, other trimmers are already, everybody's going through this. So, Rose, they don't have any time for us to do it. There's others that don't have time for it. I don't, I don't mean this to sound like a, well, a, a dumb question. The Arborist, is this something, or is it only like the major companies? I mean, I'm thinking like this for more. No, Arborist is not. And it's small companies. It's not. Yeah, no, no, but, they, but, they, but they've got, but, but like, I don't know whether Vermont Arborist <laughs> does this kind of work or whether some of the landscaping companies around. But then, but you have to be I'm sorry? You got to have a $2 million insurance policy and they got to be, they can't be up into the, they can't be up into the primary. They can't just be somebody down there cutting on the ground. So it's not, it, it's not going to be some small guy that wants to cut brush on the side with a $2 million insurance liability thing or something. We're, we, we're trying to get another, another term of yeah. a practice doing a little bit. I just, I'm just making you aware that yeah. you may hear about this. Okay. No, no, it's just, you know, if we can, if we can help in the finding. I mean, I, I had some awareness that we were behind. I didn't know how much behind we were. Jim, is there other exposure in terms of not meeting the shot clock deadline on the make ready? There's a, there's provisions in there where we were supposed to have a list of uh, contractors that they could hire themselves. Mm -hmm. to just, I don't know if we have that or not. So uh, we can we can notify them that we can't meet the thing, which um, we don't need this, they know that already at this point. Um, and there's other provisions in the. I can write up something on the full attachments as to what provisions are. <laughs> uh, but what the provisions are something like this. If we're supposed to have a list of contractors that they, why don't we put together a list? If they're not available, that's not our problem, but at least right. we're giving them the list and we're complying. Right. Uh, are there other resources? I don't know if this is PUC or PSD who's keeping track of our adherence to the schedule. Would they have any resources potentially? Um, you know, if we said, hey, we, we, we want to get it done, we're facing this lack of capacity and trimmers, who else can we turn to? Might they have suggestions? So. I didn't hear that. I said, yeah. yeah. With VEPSA. And I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, there's tree works, there's ask ones. Lucas, huh? That's far as free turners. Yeah. Lucas free was a book over. Ah. Uh, Northern Utilities, I believe, or Molar Lines, or 
So trees are wrong. All over again. Are the locals? What what does Vermont arborists? Would they do it? I mean, they're not. That's you know, they're Vermont arborists uh, based out of um, Belt, so pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't we, know. We could put out an RFP if we can get the name. Do you know all the names? But on, yeah, we can put out an RFP and see what we can do. It's good. Well, that's good. It's good we have you, Jim, temporarily to do this because this is exactly the sort of thing where we wouldn't even have known we were getting into trouble. And, and it's good to have you just try to marshal as much resources we can marshal. Yeah. Speaking of Jim, we have an agreement which we we the board has not been able to sign because we haven't. I brought it. Well, we do a right signature. So we need to have. I will move that we approve the agreement with Jim. Second. Any discussion? And all of you should. All of you should have a copy of this. Any discussion? Um, so I move that we uh, approve this agreement and authorize me to sign it. Second. Any discussion? And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Just for the same one other thing, maybe. Sure. I mean, I don't feel comfortable changing uh, Hardwick's policies that have been in place for a long time. I have rewritten the easements only because the easement that you're using, basically the customer is giving his car blanche to go anywhere on their property. I don't think they know they're doing that, but they are. Um, and so I, I'm going to send these to Eli and I just, but if you don't want me to do that, I don't want to, I just don't want to step on any toes. So. Yeah. I don't think we need a formal motion on that, but my, my view would be on things like that. And you and I talked about, right. about, about the easements. Um, yeah, I think Eli needs to look at it to make sure that, that, that from a legal standpoint, it, it's, it's, it's the, the change is okay. But you know, I think that we should be dealing with customers reasonably, and we need to ask for the access that we need. But we don't need to be asking for the for more than what we need. Um, so um, yeah, I plus I, I Jim showed me the um, the easement form that he's talking about. There's no room for a description. Of the area that where the easement was being granted, there was no specific description of the easement itself. To me, that's that that just is not the way an easement ought to be drawn. I mean, if somebody came to me with that, I wouldn't sign it. Mm -hmm. um, the way I look at it, so the best thing is to have good customer relations. Yeah. That's good. Good customer service. Yeah, period. But, and I think what all of us, what as commissioners, I think what each of us have run into is we've had ratepayers come to us and uh, with some complaint. They feel like what Hardwood Electric's done hasn't been right. And what I think we all rely on is we want to be we want to be able to rely on the fact that we're being reasonable as other utilities are. And so if we're starting to rewrite utility practices and, and, and do something that's out of line, I don't think we have anything to fall back to defend. And, and so I think we really count on you to, to make sure we're doing it. Yeah, if you see something where we're out of line, we're, we're cooked in terms of as a board, there's no defending. You know, if we're not doing something that's reasonable and yeah, yeah. I, I, and I would say to the extent that you see other policies or practices that I'm going to give you something with a leaf as far as 
what the statutes of Vermont say, and there's a misconception that we have the utility as a right of way in town in the roadway. Uh, it's no, you need the adjoining landowner's permission to cut in the roadway. Partition that can't cut on private property. And everyone fit in. And now with the towns pushing you out to 24 feet with poles, it's an issue. You don't have to follow it, but you should be aware of it. That's my take on it. Okay. You don't. No, but I don't know. Yeah. You should be aware of what the statutes say. You don't have to follow them, but you should be aware of them. No, we do have to follow them. No. If it's a statute, we do need to follow it. Yeah, all utilities, oh, whatever. I'll, I'll leave that with you before. No, okay. I've got it all made up. There may be interpretation. That, that's that's fine. But if the law requires us to do something, then it's we. Pretty well. It's written in the statutes of the state, so. Yeah. <laughs> This is signed. Uh, okay. okay. Well, this will be back office for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. Please a copy. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay. Anything else? I have a uh, question, Lynn, that you actually brought up earlier about the dental. Is that something oh, that needs to go to the regular board meeting? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I had asked Beth, yep. and and I not clearly apparently, um, what the what the dollar amount of the increase is. In other words, what are we talking? Is this going to cost us, you know, five thousand dollars over the course of the year? Is it going to cost us fifty thousand dollars? I mean, it's is it fifty cents? I have no idea what 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 the rough roughly what the just the increase less. Than $5,000. Oh, absolutely. With our current staffing, the the yearly increase, the HED portion is $335. If we were fully staffed with our three new employees that we're wanting to get, um, the increase to HED would be $530. I don't know the board decision on that, but if you want one, I'm happy to make a motion. <laughs> I, I, I'm going along with whatever y'all Say for me to do. Because we're not changing it. We're just maintaining. We're maintaining it and they're increasing the rate. So we just stay with we Correct. just stay with that. And, and like I, I said, they have they have yeah. increased their rate since 2021. Yeah, I just I I, I figured it was probably when I asked the question, I thought it was probably a small number, but I just didn't know and I just wanted to make sure. Yep. Um so yeah. Okay. I have a question. We have not heard anything from the union, have we? Nothing has come into anybody. From who? The union. The union. Oh, nope. Because contract is expiring. Like what I can't remember is if it expires June first or June thirtieth. June first. June first. Yeah. So we're just a few weeks. Yeah. Um. And We've I got one union member here. Well, I don't know. Do you know, Ken? I, I, I can look when, when I get home, but if it continues from month to month, if there's no new contract or if it just goes. It, it just, we continue with the old contract until the new one is done, and then whatever it is decided, if one month, two months, three months down the road, go retroactive back on the first. Okay. Time. Well, we, I think it's fair to say, when the, we as a board knew it was coming up. We treated it as important. It would have been easier to go through it with Mike here. Mike's not here, but that's not an excuse. We're not going to delay. Well, no, we're waiting for a proposal from yeah. the union. We're um, ready to move. If somebody at the union is assuming that we're ready to deal with it, I mean, that's I've, a wrong assumption. I've spoken with Scott Cameron, so he's aware that, you know. We're ready to go. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Scott is the board. I believe that, um, I heard they were supposed to have a meeting with um, a union rep last week. Yeah. And so we've heard nothing, but something should be coming forward. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Should be, from what I'm understanding, Jeff Lamette is taking over from Jeff is, is back. 
We don't need to say anymore. <laughs> Do you guys have a choice about that? I have not a clue. I hear you. We're still recording. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get more wisdom sprinkles. It started off Tim Lombardi. Yeah, and then there was somebody in La Bombard. That's who he is. Oh, but yeah, but there was another name in there too. Before. Okay, great. Um, well, we'll cross that bridge when we, you know, there's nothing for us to do until we until we have a proposal. So, um, anybody? Patrick, Patrick Morrissey is the shop cooper. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, presumably they want a new contract, so we're waiting. You know, we're, 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 there's nothing for us to do until somebody comes to us or something, so. I can give you an update. You had asked about the uh, phones and the GM's phone. I worked with Kim at FEBSA who had some awesome contacts because it was a royal mess. So we ended up uh, just totally deleting all the old accounts, including the general manager's phone. And we all have, we have brand new accounts and it, they're much easier access. They're all on one account and it's all set up and ready to go finally. Great. Cool. Thank you. Um, anything else that anybody has? Is the maybe I just haven't been paying attention enough, but is is the is the Walker project with Dave Gagney? I'm saying that right yeah. on board. Is is that okay right now? Are we doing uh, yeah, that's far as I yes. They, they've got equipment in, they got some more equipment coming. Great. Thank you. I talked to Trevor this morning. And that's great. So that was one of the. We, we, were, were, we do need to get yeah. something together with the metering that I've done. Um, the metering that I've wiped out there. And it's going reached out to Horseville and their metering guy to really come and let us tell us what we need. Basically. And our original, the way we budgeted it, Beth, was that that well could it come back online and start producing in what month from the budget? Was it June or July? I think it was more like July. I'd have to look, but I think it was more like July. Is that what do you think, Jim? Is that I don't know what all that's probably a question for, for yeah. That. So that one, we have to worry about that. Now we know we have to worry about the, the big backlog. Um, what are the other big, well, I guess eventually we'll need to worry about the town, the big yellow barn project. Mike's been involved in that one. Mike, should we be worried about anything there? No, I think we need one more meeting. I got updated from Eric, some new loads and when they're going to come online. So. I think, you know, Jim, I and Brian sit together. We can just look at it, and even if we have to meet them, just to make sure we understand what they're doing. And Jim, give me a chance to update you on the whole process of how we got to where we are, which might be good to know. Um, so I, I think that's okay, but we should meet. I'm, I'm out of town this week. Maybe next week we get together and just go over it, just so I can give you the technical parts of what I know. I tell you that uh, the blind is built. The, they dug the trench today, put the conduit in, they pour concrete on them. On the conduit tomorrow, um, we've got the pad, we've got the transformer. Um, cool. We've got everything to do. They're looking to get out. They don't care about the ex um, elevator building, but they do. They're looking to get power to the yellow barn by well, we told them at the end of May. Day, so. Yeah. But, are there any other customer projects, like big customer projects that are there's no way on the solid us? Yeah. Um we're still waiting to get some metering information from the where the meters are going today. 
That's in an accelerator course, so it's not. That's December of the year, but we got online. Going back to Wilkinson, I'm just wondering if we should invite Dave Gavney to our next meeting, so give sure. us a status update on Wilkinson. That's a good idea. We should do that. You, I mean, you may I, want to, in our next meeting, I, there's some custom issues we talked about last time. We should probably go over again. Yeah. And maybe for one of them, we should have Eli available. He's been involved in one of them already. Yeah, that's for an executive session. Yes. But there's nothing we need to do tonight. No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, nope. thank And when we're talking, and, and so at this point, barring something unfortunate we're talking about our, just their next regular meeting which will be on the 20th mm -hmm. yes okay. I, I i gotta bug out because i'm late for 6 30 meeting <laughs> but i think we covered most stuff right i think so okay i'll talk okay. to you guys uh, next week all right Bye -bye. take care thanks take care Anybody have anything else? Is there a motion? I move to adjourn. Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, we are adjourned at 621.